Uh, yeah, so this is more TensorFlow, um, and uh, essentially it's a project uh, that I built um, in order to step birds on my bird feeder. Um, uh, uh, I initially built it for my girlfriend, who uh, is really into wildlife, um, and we got a bird feeder in the garden, and she thought that there was no birds visiting it. Um, and so I'm a good techie, and so I strapped up some cameras, uh, and they started off being analog CCTV, CCTV cameras um, using uh, some open source CCTV software that I forget the name of. Um, obviously that works, and I was able to prove that birds were visiting the bird feeder, but um, we had obviously issues with low resolution, low frame rate, um, and uh, well, as I'm generally building systems, uh, limited scalability, uh, single box, everything feeds into single box eventually, no more, no more cameras on that box. Um, I wanted a HD solution, um, so uh, the cheapest thing that was available at the time, might not be now, but was uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, I think back then the only other option was a GoPro, which obviously is a difficult thing to uh, do anything with other than go and fish SD cards out of uh, and recharge. Um, the first version uh, was using Raspberry Pi version 1, uh, which is a uh, single core, I think half gig of RAM. Um, and so it all has to be written in C++, uh, integrated directly with the GPU um, in order to read the H264 data uh, straight off that um, and then do some stuff with it. Um, uh, then moved on to uh, Raspberry Pi version 2, which has got more uh, things on it. Um, and that became um, Python helpers. It's got more cores, it's got more RAM. Uh, and generally a bit easier and started to push to YouTube originally up until they changed their rules and uh, we got to 1.4 million videos before they blocked us um, and so now I use S3 and pay for the storage. Um, so like I said the original versions use background subtraction. Um, background subtraction is uh, well pretty simple process. Um, in OpenCV 2.x um, it can just be done with CV sub which just literally subtracts one image from the other. Um, in uh, 3.x there's a whole bunch of uh, much fancier versions but essentially they do the same thing uh, which is uh, take that image there and based on the movement turn it into that image there. Um, it performs really well when the back background is static. Um, Poorly if the background is moving, because obviously it's moving. Um, and <laughs> if the object stops, then we lose that too. Now, hopefully this will play. Hooray. Uh, and so this is one of our cameras. This is one of my neighbors. Um, and so you can see this is it running um, across the, the video at the top. As you can see, it's really noisy. Um, the OpenCV is brilliant, and you can put a lot of image process pipelines. So this is once it's been cleaned up a bit, and you can see that it actually removes a huge amount of the noise, and that works pretty well enough that you can do bounding box stuff on it, um, which, well, you know, for uh, when you've got static background, works really, really well. Um, one of the other, um, this is uh, our bird box, this is, um, there's a live stream of this uh, on YouTube at the moment, and they've just started building a nest, if you're interested. Um, they didn't last year, the females had a fight and they never came back. This year, we might get nesting. Uh, the year before, we had chicks, uh, that was really good. Um, however, lots of them die, it's really sad. Uh, then we've got a new camera. Um, uh, the new camera points at the garden, so lots and lots of movement in the background. Um, that's the camera on the right, uh, it's really printed uh, fitting but essentially it's the same Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, this is the same code as running on the previous one and as you can see it's really noisy um, and there's no birds in it and it just gets set off pretty much constantly. Um, in fact it got set off pretty much constantly and became useless. Um, uh, after that, uh, I spent a huge amount of time messing with OpenCV pipelines to try and clean up the image, try and uh, minimise areas so that it would um, only capture things. Uh, I probably got it to about 70% accuracy um, and then started looking at some of the um, machine learning that's built into OpenCV and then some of it that's built into SkyPy as well. Um, that worked quite well uh, and then I got onto TensorFlow. Uh, the TensorFlow stuff is incredibly powerful uh, and I started off with somebody's um, code off the internet um, that had I think three convolutional layers and uh, probably not that many deep layers. Uh, I iterated over it a lot um, in order to get something that was relatively accurate um, and then also optimised it for training speed. Um, and came up with uh, two convolutional layers with nine filters and a whole bunch of uh, the deep neural network 
uh, which are just fully connected neurons. Those are incredibly fast and you can have a lot of them on a GPU. Uh, the convolutional neural networks are much, much slower uh, and you can't have very many of them. So, um, well, that's why I ended up with that. Um, the current data set is about 2.5 million images. Uh, these images are taken from uh, videos. Uh, HD video gives you an awful lot of images for relatively low cost. If you're doing 25 frames a second, you soon get to a huge number. Um, uh, I did some work where I manually sorted them into buckets um, of something and nothing. Um, I did start off putting them into categories of different types of birds, which does did seem to work pretty well, but I just didn't seem to have enough data in order to um, well, categorise them, really. Um, uh, additional images uh, were augmented, and so that was using slight rotation, uh, just in the contrast, just in the brightness, in order to bulk up the number of images. Um, to uh, particularly for the bird images because there's a lot more not birds than birds. Uh, train takes about 12 hours uh, on a GTX 970, uh, and I spent a lot of time optimizing the um, the GPU to keep it at 97, 95% uh, utilization. Um, probably was a bit unnecessary, uh, but I got a bit OCD with it, and um, well, just kept tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it. Um, the laptop ran very, very, very hot. Um, uh, ran at 92 degrees for 12 hours and end, and I uh, killed three batteries. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, the convolutional layers uh, you can extract the filters out of. So the convolutional layers, uh, as probably some of you know, uh, essentially derive a filter. Um, so these are the filters off the two layers of nine filters uh, that came out of it. Um, oh, using some magic, I can't remember. You can extract these. I can't remember how to do it. Um, and so these are the filters that were learned. Uh, but interestingly, this is uh, the same filters um, off an image that the neural network had never seen, uh, which gives you sort of a rough idea of what it must be picking up, which seems to be edges, uh, really. Um, that's a little diagram of uh, the neural network. Uh, like I say, 500, uh, the, uh, the fully connected layer is 512 neurons wide and 30 deep. This seems to be a quite fragile setup. Um, actually, I initially started with much more layers and found that it got stuck in the learning loop. Um, uh, 40 also wasn't as good as 30. Um, and you know, this is about high parameter uh, tuning. Uh, but like I say, my view is that it's actually quite a fragile thing to set up. Um, and I guess this is where, where the work's going into at the moment, is trying to work out what the best thing to these param high parameters is. Um, and from my point of view, that seemed to be where the um, the instinct you were trying to build up was is uh, in what the what the hyperparameters look like. Um, when the once the model was learned, uh, it's then deployed to uh, Raspberry Pis, uh, just one Raspberry Pi at the moment. Um, it's very very slow. We've got no GPU acceleration whatsoever, so it's running completely on the processor. Um, Technically, you could get it, you could use the GPU to uh, speed it up. However, I'm using the GPU for the camera, so it sort of ruled out. Um, so it only runs at 2.5 frames a second, uh, and that was with a lot of tweaking and tuning as well. Um, however, that's perfectly fast enough for detecting if there's a bird flying in and flying out. Um, the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, has four cores, um, and the general process is to buffer the video, use FFmpeg to split it up. Um, if the TensorFlow bit of code detects something, save it, upload it to S3, and away we go. Uh, that's a rough diagram of what it looks like. There's a few more bits involved, but essentially that's what happens. Snapcat is a tiny little bit of Python code, which is, um, well, essentially a Unix signal triggered version of cat. Um, so it will, you know, if it gets a USR1 signal, it will start writing, USR2 stops writing, done. Uh, in cron-D, which is um, a cron daemon, um, which is actually a file system watching daemon, um, We'll detect when the file's been finished written and then upload it to S3. Um, I built a user interface because it's primarily for my girlfriend and just going, hey, there's some videos in uh, S3 is, she will use it, but yeah, it's, it's not really going to fly. Um, I'm not a UI designer, so it's terrible from an aesthetic point of view, but it's functional. Um, I'm sure with some CSS love, it could be beautiful. Not my job. Um, it's all built with the AWS JavaScript SDK, so um, that's a almost serverless um, SDK where uh, the JavaScript runs in your browser and talks uh, directly to uh, AWS uh, via their APIs. Um, 
literally that page is a single HTML page with a small amount of JavaScript in uh, and the rest is all, all backed off onto AWS. Uh, Cognito for user management, um, the videos and the images that make up the uh, film strip are served directly from S3 and uh, I don't know if you can see but above each of the videos there's a good bad, bad and ugly button, it's a bit small, um, but they're also stored as S3 tags on the video um, with the idea being that they can be used in future to then be fed back into uh, the machine learning. Um, hey, so this is some of the videos that were uh, taken from it. Uh, I think that's a bolt finch, I might be wrong. Um, this is quite a nice detail, you can see, see quite a bit. Um, and then I think there's a blue tit. We get a lot of blue tits. They've got incredibly blue feet, almost like they're wearing blue, blue leather gloves, in fact. And probably one more. Yeah, no, they're, they're what's nesting in the box. Uh, uh, and so that's pretty much where it is at the moment. Um, the, there's a bunch of next things that I would like to build. Um, so one of the first ones is automated retraining. So that's using the good, bad uh, and ugly tags in order to um, have them be scheduled via probably an AWS uh, P instance to um, relearn the model uh, and then push the model back out to the Raspberry Pi's. Um, I'd quite like to have a play with um, some temporal learning. So rather than just feeding in a single image at a time, feeding the last X amount of images, so it's got some idea of this and this and this and this. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be a benefit or not, or whether or not it'll just end up being a bit of a toy, but I'd quite like to play with it to see what the results will be. Um, one of the things that um, I'd be really interested in also seeing is there's TensorFlow Lite, um, and this is um, essentially converting the model down to, I think, 8-bit integers. Uh, which allows it to run much, much faster on small embedded hardware and I believe it's what's done when you deploy any sort of TensorFlow models to uh, Android. It goes through the same sort of process, um, which is supposed to be much faster, <coughs> I just haven't got around to doing it. Um, I did say earlier that I started playing with species identification. This also seemed to produce uh, really, really positive results. Uh, once I've got more data, it'll certainly be something that I look at um, and I may extend the tags. The, there is actually a little box so you can put text tags in on the UI as well. So it may well be that we take those and use those in order then to break them up into uh, species. Because uh, obviously a lot of birds look quite different and so it should be possible. Well, my eyes can do it, so. Um, uh, and then finally, uh, once I get around to clean up the code, I shall probably open source it because, well, it's just a hobby project and no, no, no commercial interest in me. Um, that's it, pretty much. Lee.